Hi, I'm Selena from Annie's Bookstop of Worcester, and I'm here with Charlene Harris. And uh, uh, most of you probably have heard her name before. She's written in several different genres. Um, and for readers unfamiliar with your work, Charlene, how would you describe what you write? I write a, a, a wide variety of things. I get bored if I stick with anything too long. I wrote urban fantasy before it was urban fantasy. I've written quite a few conventional mysteries. I've written mysteries with a touch of, of supernatural. Uh, I've written like one or two things that were definitely romance. Yep. And right now I'm writing an alternate history America series with a gun woman uh, as the protagonist. Mm hmm. OK, um, so what can readers expect from your latest book? And I, it, I believe that, that you're are you going to be speaking about uh, The Serpent in Heaven? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, the Serpent in Heaven is a different point of view from the other books in the series. The other books were from the point of view of Lisbeth Rose, who is the gun woman I spoke of. This is from the point of view of her half sister, Felicia who is in San Diego at the Grigori Rasputin School, uh, learning who she is and what she can do. Uh, most of which she didn't expect when we met her first in the previous book. And this is from the Gunny Rose series? Yes. Yeah, this is book number four, I believe. It is. Okay. Um, so what was the inspiration for the series, actually? And uh, what were the steps that you took to bring it from uh, the initial inspiration to uh, finished products? Well, uh, I wrote a short story for a Sean Speakman anthology, uh, and I didn't want it to be about anything I'd been writing. I wanted to do something new because that's the fun of, of uh, doing a short story. You can take a little break and have a vacation somewhere else. Uh, mm -hmm. I decided I wanted to write about a woman who made her living with her gun. And after I wrote the story, I really, really enjoyed the story. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to write a whole book about this character? But I had to build the world to support the character and what I needed her to do. So I said it in the past in the 1930s, but America is very different from the way it was in our 1930s. It's cracked on all its seams due to the Depression, the assassination of President-elect Roosevelt, uh, the banking issues, Spanish flu, the Dust Bowl, everything has conspired against America, and it just couldn't stand up against that much pressure. So it's in five different countries. Hey. <clears throat> Wow, that's that's an interesting uh, premise. Um, so what kind of research did you have to do uh, in writing it? Well, I had to find the the real the the precipitating incident for the worst of this to happen. Uh, as it happens, there was an attempt to assassinate him in Miami before he took office. So I made that attempt successful rather than a failure. And that was the precipitating event that caused this cascade of problems to become insupportable to the American government. So I had to do a lot of research, uh, but most of it was in snippets because all of a sudden I would think, I don't know how many people had a refrigerator in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people had indoor showers. I don't know what the symptoms of the Spanish flu were like. So here and there, I would have to look things up really quick and read as much as I could about them so I could at least be, you know, marginally accurate in the books. Yep. Okay. So um, what was your favorite research story? Not not necessarily about this particular series, but you've, you've written a number of different series, like the Aurora Tea Garden, Tea Garden series, the mystery, and, um, you know, this Suki uh, Stackhouse series, and all of the, your, all of your other series. What was your favorite research story? This, this series had the hardest thing to research. I went down a big rabbit hole. I had to find out about 
the sheriff's department in San Diego in 1935, where the headquarters would be. That turned out to be quite difficult to find out. But I did read a lot about the history of law enforcement in San Diego, including the fact that the first jail was like a uh, just a thrown up shack and the first prisoner escaped. But the interesting thing was the first prisoner was the man who later became the infamous Judge Roy Bean. Whoa. Go figure. Go figure. Obviously, this was a guy who had a big backstory. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's something great to, to find when you're researching. Whoa. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. So what was the biggest challenge that you had in writing and putting out um, Serpent in Heaven? Uh, well, changing the point of view, uh, it was really hard to be 15 again. And no less painful than it was the first time. <laughs> okay, I can see that. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, and how did you overcome that? I mean, how did you, how did you, um, make yourself 15. I mean, make, make the character 15. I just, I thought back, uh, really everybody would love to forget being 15. I, I think, uh, so I just thought back to it and I thought about the few really awkward moments I remember from that stage in my life. Uh, it's, there weren't that few awkward moments. It's just that I don't remember most of them. Uh, and I I started operating from that base, but uh, the intense desire to know yourself and the desire to be known, uh, plus the awkward way of going about it, uh, the difficulty of of uh, living your life the way you want to then, but within so many rules, you know, uh, it was it was sadly easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> Okay. Um, so what character did you love or hate the most? I have a love-hate relationship with the character Felix. Felix is a, uh, he's got some good and he's got some bad. He is not any fun at all. Uh, he doesn't have a sense of humor, really. Um, he has a lot of, of um, magical power. But he doesn't always deploy it in a way that I would like. So I always have trouble with Felix. Uh, my editor sometimes does too, because to me, he's extremely unlikable. And yet some people really root for him. And I'm going, why? He's just awful. <laughs> now, do, your, do your characters kind of talk to you and, and kind of... Um, let you know what's going to happen next or they reveal themselves to me as I'm writing. Mm -hmm. I think it would be kind of crazy to say they talk to me yeah. because yeah. I put the words in their mouths and I'm very aware that I'm their creator and that I can kill them in a split second. And I will, <laughs> yes. I will do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, do you outline your stories or um, are you a pantser? I'm definitely a pantser. I always have been. I tried outlining uh, with one book because I thought, well, let's see if this works better. Because I know a lot of people who do outline very meticulously. But it doesn't work for me. It seems to put a damper on my creativity. Yep. I feel like I'm painting by numbers. So I'm just a complete, into, I, it's lucky if I know who gets killed in the book or yeah. who killed them even. Yeah. That's kind of what I meant by do your characters talk to you. I mean, it, does it, does it flow? Um, you know, I hope by the way. end of rewriting it does anyway. <laughs> so do you do a lot of, of uh, rewriting? Do you Absolutely. I do. I'm a great believer in rewriting. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I've heard from a lot of the authors that rewriting, you know, some people love the rewriting more than more than writing the, the original story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what else can we expect from you in the near future? Well, I've turned in the fifth book in the Gunny Rose series, All the Dead Shall Weep, and I will write a sixth one. After that, uh, the prospect is hazy, as the crazy eight balls say. Um, after that, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I hope I'll start a new series, and we'll see how that goes. Ah, okay. But it hasn't popped into my head yet. It will, though. I hope. <laughs> Sooner or later, the well will dry up, I suppose, but it hasn't yet. <laughs> So are there any uh, possibilities of having the Gunny Rose series uh, be on television? As it's been optioned twice. Uh -huh. uh, so we'll see. Uh, so have the Harper Connolly books. They've been optioned too. But uh, they have been hanging fire for so long, I'm not really that optimistic anymore. Uh -huh. However, you know, I suppose someone else will option them or or not. I know uh, several of your other books have, have been optioned for television. Yeah, it, I've been real lucky that way. That is, just, And I have really good agents out there. Yeah, it's just amazing. I mean, for, for people who might not realize it, your uh, Suki Stackhouse stories are, are true blood. Yeah. Um, and uh, Aurora Tea, Tea Garden series are on Hallmark, I guess. Yep, Hallmark Movie and Mystery and the... Uh, Midnight Texas Books had two years on NBC. Wow. That, yeah. That's just amazing that you were able to do that. I mean, it, it's just not very many authors had that opportunity to be able to. I'm, I'm aware of how blessed I am. Oh, it's incredible. Okay. Now I have some questions for you about being a writer. Okay. Um, what's your favorite part of being a writer on the whole writing and publishing process? getting to know other writers mm -hmm. that to me is like icing on the cake not only do I get to do what I always wanted to do I get to know other people who do it and uh, people whose work I intensely admire uh, people whose characters I think are wonderful and that's just that really keeps me going because I get really excited when I meet a writer whose work I've really enjoyed Mm -hmm. Who were some of your favorite writers? Oh, the list is almost too long. Uh, if you want to go to my website, which is CharlaneHarris.com, it's under construction right now. But ordinarily, I have a feature on there called Book and Blog, and you can see what I've read and enjoyed for the past three or four years. I don't write about books I don't like. There's enough negativity anyway in this world, mm -hmm. but I do love to recommend a book. Some of them I recommend with a lot of passion. Some of them I go, this was a good book. You'd enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now I'm really enjoying reading Sarah Painter, uh, an English writer. Um, Daniel O'Malley is one of my favorites, but he takes a long time to write a book. Uh, Jody Taylor is one of my favorites, uh, Patricia Briggs. Mm -hmm. And then there are so many mysteries I'm really enjoying. Uh, Louise Penny, for mm -hmm. example. Um, oh, I just read a really good book by, uh, okay, her name is running out the other side of my head. She writes one series about an archaeologist in England, and then she writes a series about a detective of Indian descent in England, and they're both just super good. Oh, wow. Oh, that was, I'm trying to think of who that is. Um, Griffiths, so, Ellie Griffith. Oh, okay. Wow, that's great. I knew it would come. It yep. came. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so what has been your favorite adventure during your writing career? Oh, uh, favorite. The most fraught was doing things with the cast of True Blood, uh -huh. because once you add beautiful people into the equation, uh, the fandom goes kind of crazy, really. Um, I, 
book fans are they get very ardent and excited thank goodness but the level escalates when there are actors involved Mm -hmm. and that was really difficult for me because I wasn't used to it I had no idea what to expect Uh, acting is so very different from writing it's so collaborative and writing is essentially a lonely thing which I I love but uh, actors can't act in a vacuum they need the ensemble so that was really different to observe that process and I felt like I learned a lot about it and I met some wonderful people too I'm not saying I didn't it was just more of a uh, I, I was extremely nervous at first yeah, I can imagine it's a totally different world out there. it is a totally different world uh, the stakes are different they to some extent live by their looks which is an alien feel to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it was just very interesting. Mm-hmm. So what is the greatest lesson that you've learned thus far in your writing career? The greatest lesson. It, and this is going to sound really trite, mm-hmm. no. but it, it is always good to treat people with courtesy and to keep a lot of your opinions to yourself because the people you meet as you're going up the ladder are the same people you will meet when you're coming down. You need to to remind yourself that even when you're very famous, there's going to come a day when you're not. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to close doors on yourself by being, as my parents would say, too big for your britches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good, very good advice. And now, what is that? Um, I'm looking for a piece of advice that you'd want to share with other writers. Is that your main piece of advice, or uh, if you're if you're going to be a writer, you have to enjoy your own company. And you have to finish. Don't stop because you've had a better idea. You'll never be a, be able to say, yes, I'm a writer, unless you start a project and finish it. Mm, That's very, where most people fall short. Very good idea. Yeah. I, I, I know that's, uh, that's very important because sometimes you're, you're in the middle of something and you, and you think, Oh, what a great idea I just had. I got to do it. (laughs) Finish. Yep. Great idea. So are there any groups, clubs, or uh, organizations that you'd recommend to other writers that have helped you in your career? Absolutely. Sisters in Crime, Mm. uh, for one thing, because it's still important to keep monitoring the variation in pay between women writers and male writers, the amount of reviews women writers get as opposed to male writers uh, to support each other. That is very important. And it's a battle that's by no means won. For every woman I meet who thinks that everything is all parity now, that is not true. And it really behooves us to join an organization that is watching out for our rights and to help them, uh, to help that organization in its struggle. Uh, that's very important. I, I hadn't realized that there was that much of a discrepancy. I knew there was, but. There is. There should be no discrepancy. Yeah, that is absolutely true. Wow. So uh, women writers, join that organization yep. if you're if you're writing mysteries. Wow. Um, All right. Now I have questions about you as a person. What is one thing that most people don't realize about you? Oh my gosh. I'm pretty (laughs) much an open book. I can't imagine what anybody would even want to know about me. I'm a grandmother. Ah, I have two grandchildren. We have rescue dogs. Uh, I'm a regular church goer. 
Uh, and some people are really surprised by that, though I don't know why. Hmm. Um, well, I think that's about it. I love to read. That's no secret. I'm a constant reader. I probably read three to four books a week. Wow. Okay. I think maybe the church going thing, maybe it's because you write about vampires. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I just don't see the contradiction. I don't either, but some people might. <laughs> um, okay. Is there any question that you wish interviewers would ask you and what would the answers be? Sometimes I get asked if I intend the message in my books. Yes, of course I do. Uh, it doesn't happen by accident. I'm not trying to ride any particular horse, but I do have something I want to say. And I do put that in my books. And if you want to think about that a little, great. If you don't, that's also okay, because basically I write for entertainment. Okay, great. So what, what is or are your passions when you're not writing? And how do you make time for the hobbies and things that you love? I'm not really reading is my hobby. Okay. That's, that's about it. I like to cook uh, to a certain extent, not so much now that I'm in my 70s. But I do like to cook. I like to keep in touch with my friends. And luckily, that's what the internet was designed for. So I'm enjoying that. I like to support other writers. Um, I'll, I'm a quiet Democrat. Though that's something I really believe in. And oh, that's about it. I don't seem to have that many hours in the day. But Luckily for me, I don't have any super time consuming hobbies. I've got friends who weave and I've got friends who uh, build furniture and I've got friends who do all sorts of really productive and wonderful things. But I just read. Well, that's, that's certainly a good hobby. <laughs> OK, um, now what does your writing space look like and what do you need to have around you while you're writing? Well, you're looking at it. This is my writing space. It's so nice to have a dedicated office for me after years of working wherever I could find a place to put my typewriter down. Uh, the last place I had, the well, really the first place when I was writing full time, it was in a um, utility closet. <laughs> But it was a place I could shut the door and be alone, uh -huh. which is so important, so important. Uh, here I've got my books, some of my books, and some of my, you know, award paraphernalia and pictures of people I love and mm -hmm. the dogs. They're, the dog door is in my office, so flap, 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 in they go, out they come. Um <laughs> I do have a pretty much of a schedule. I go in in the morning and I try to work till noon or so on. And um, then usually in the afternoon, I come back for a couple of hours and then I start doing other stuff around the house. So you mentioned your dogs. Um, can you talk a little bit about them? Do they help you or hinder you in your work? Once we got the dog door put in, it wasn't nearly as much of a problem. On the other hand, it was probably good for me to get up and down all the time, but it was so irritating when they'd be in here barking at someone <laughs> that they could see out the door, uh, and then I would have to get up and let them out, and then they wanted to come back in, and I would get up and let them back in and dry them off or whatever, and now they love their dog door. They're in and out uh, really <laughs> quickly, so... I would say sometimes they interrupt my writing, but I'm used to it by now after all these years, and uh, they're both pretty old. Oh. Um, and we used to have four, oh, so that wow. was a very busy place. But now we're down to two, oh. Abigail and Colt, and they're both, they are not spring chickens, are you, Colt? <laughs> no. Oh, so when you're writing, you mentioned that you were writing in a utility closet that um, 
it, it seems to me as though you really like silence when you're writing or do you I do you I don't listen to music a lot of people do and they have their playlist with their when they publish their book they'll publish the playlist in the book and I'm going what the hell uh <laughs> that is really alien to me I think it's wonderful but I just don't do it yeah I wouldn't be I'm just to- I'm just old school I guess I just listen to to my head yeah I wouldn't be able to write with music either <laughs> so um when you're um do you have any like favorite foods or drinks or you know that you must have in the vicinity when you're writing like you know water or coffee or water and coffee are my mainstays yeah I try not to keep food within reach uh it's not good for me and it's not good for the keyboard either <laughs> yeah good point <laughs> okay Okay, now I just have two more questions for you. One is, where can people find your work besides Annie's Bookstop of Worcester? And um, this is where I always have to do a little plug for Annie's. Um, sure. You can get Charlene's books on um, at Annie's. And oh, your dog is in the back. <laughs> um, you can uh, you can get your books at Annie's um, and you can call us at 796-5613. Uh, 508 area code um, or you can send email to orders at anniesbooksworcester.com and we can get most of Charlene's books although some of them are out of print um, but uh, just you know let us know and we can try and get your books now where else could we get your books luckily for me just about anywhere uh, online or Barnes and Noble or any of the many fine independent bookstores that I have loved to visit over the years. Uh, luckily, my books are readily available. That's great. Yeah. Okay. And my last question is, um, how can we follow your work and share your awesomeness? Oh, um, well, I have a professional Facebook page and I answer messages on that. Uh, my assistant will forward urgent messages to me if they require my personal reply. Um, I have an Instagram account at Real Charlene, though I'm not the one who posts on there. Uh, I have a, a young lady who posts for me there because that turned out to be the one thing too many. Yeah. Uh, also, I have a website, CharleneHarris.com. And as soon as the renovation is complete, that will become more active. I'm really hoping. And I answer questions on there, too. And Goodreads. I answer questions on Goodreads. So I am very easy to get in touch with. That is wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Charlene, for the, you know, for this interview. I think, um, you know, people will really enjoy listening to to your answers and, and uh it was really great speaking with you. Well, thank you. I've enjoyed it also, Selena. Uh, I hope that the bookstore gets lots of calls for my books. I hope so. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Charlene Harris. Uh, great meeting you. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye.